And the word of God for us to consider this morning is Peter's first letter, beginning at chapter 2, begin reading from verse 9. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people of God, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Dear friends, I urge you, as foreigners and exiles, to abstain from sinful desires which wage war against your soul. Live such good lives among the pagans that, though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits us. And this is God's word. Dear Christian friends, Olivia, and I, and I think her name was Olivia, I heard the story a while back and I completely drew a blank and failed to double check, so I'm going to call her Olivia, it may not be her actual name. But Olivia is a real person. When she was six years old, she and her brothers and her sisters and her mom would go to the local library every day, all day, for six months. And as Olivia tells the story, she loved that period of her life. She looks back on those six months as the great library adventure. She had a ball. Every day she would go in the front door and she would make a beeline for the desk of Miss S. Miss S was the librarian. And she said, I would make my demands known. And Miss S would help find the books that she was looking for. She would help find books that were uh, on the subject that she you know, had found some interest in. And she said, Miss S was such an amazing person. She said, every day she always had time to talk to me. She always had time to help me find the book I was looking for. And she always had time to, to sometimes find that, that special book that, that was you know, just for me. She enjoyed, relished that time that she had been able to spend in the library those six months. It wasn't until years later, 20 years later, she was having a conversation with a coworker, and the coworker was talking about all these homeless people hanging out in the library. And all of a sudden, this light came on. She realized, we, we were homeless. She honestly had no idea. Her parents and Miss S had done such a good job of taking care of her needs and making her feel special and cared for. She had no idea that she and her family were homeless. And so in this story, this was on This American Life. So if you go to their podcast, you can actually hear this. It's, it's an amazing story. And the cool thing is that as part of this story, she went back to that library and she met Miss S. Miss Stevens was her name. And they had this, this joyful, tear-filled reunion. And Olivia got to tell Miss S how special she was. What a difference she had made in her life. And so right there, I'm just like, <laughs> okay, this is a cool story. Uh, but then it's, it gets even better. Guess what? Olivia is now a librarian. She's a children's librarian. And so she every day goes into her library and she gets to pay forward that kindness and that compassion and that special attention that Miss Stevens gave to her and showed to her. I just thought that was just the coolest story. I, I heard that and was like, wow. I had to go tell Sharon and she listened. I made her, made her listen to it. So, but that idea of, you know, paying forward some act of kindness that somebody has shown to you. That, that was kind of made popular in a movie. You probably recognize, some of you recognize that. That was popular in a movie a few years back called Pay It Forward. And it's really, you think about it, that's a great idea, isn't it? Somebody does something nice for you, and then you turn around and you do something nice for somebody else. Not because you're expecting anything in return. In fact, in the movie, that was kind of the deal, right? 
you couldn't take payment. You couldn't get something in return for something nice you did for somebody else. That was the idea. It was supposed to be, you know, paying it forward. But what a great idea. You do something nice for somebody else, not because they deserve it, not because they've earned it, not because, well, if I do this for them, then I know that they can do this for me, and then they'll owe me, and none of that. Somebody does something nice for you, you turn around, you do it for somebody else. What a, what a great idea. I kind of like that. But here's another interesting thought about that. That whole idea, it didn't start in Hollywood. You know, and it didn't start with that movie, did it? As we said at the beginning of the service, if you think about it, it started all the way back with Jesus. You think about what did he do with his life. And, and Jesus was unique, right, in the fact that he was not paying forward something that somebody had done for him. No, it started with him. But he looked at a broken world and, and hurting people and everything he did he did out of this one way love this, this divine compassion that God looked at this broken and hurting world and said I'm going to do something to make it better and so Jesus you look at his life he, what, he fed thousands of people who were hungry he healed people who were sick with incurable diseases and conditions he brought people back to life. Right? Everything that Jesus did in his life was an act of compassion and love directed outward towards other people. And probably the most important, one of the most important things he did was he taught people. People who had all these problems and brought all their problems to Jesus. Jesus not only took care of their problems, but he taught them that, you know what, those, those are not your biggest problems. Those are not your biggest challenges. Your, your biggest problem and your biggest challenge is, is a broken relationship with God. Your biggest problem is a problem called sin. And then in the greatest act of paying it forward ever, Jesus then offered his life as a sacrifice for those sins, right? And those early disciples, those, those first believers that gathered around Jesus and, and saw what Jesus did and, and recognized Him as the Son of God and, and came to understand what His sacrifice meant for them, what did those people do? They went out into the world. Jesus' disciples went into all the world and proclaimed the good news of who Jesus was and what Jesus had done. Those disciples didn't know those people that they went out to. And you think, what did the early Christian church do? The early Christian church says, well, I can't go myself, but you know what? Here, take our silver, take our gold, take our possessions, and use that to go and tell other people because we want to pay forward what we've received. We know how important it is to us. We want other people to hear that same message. We want other people to experience the same joy and the peace that we feel. And so those, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sorry, those early Christians and those early disciples, they went and shared with other people and it just spread right down to today, right? As I said at the beginning of the service, we're here today because of the people who came before us saw fit to pay it forward. That's a pretty cool story, isn't it? When you really stop and think about it, that we're standing on the shoulders of people who came before us going back thousands of years. People who were generous with their money, people who were generous with their time, people who were willing to stand up and say, hey, I want to tell you about something that happened to me. I want to share with you something that I know. I want to give to you what I've been given. That's a great story. And that's why we're here today. And so it is that Peter speaks to us also today across all these ages. His immediate audience were these Jewish Christians and these non-Jewish, these Gentile Christians who'd been kind of scattered around the Mediterranean region. But he's also speaking directly to every one of us here today. And he reminds them and he's reminding us of those blessings, those acts of kindness, compassion, those gifts that we've received from those who've come before us. 
And again, he's just, this is not an exhaustive lift, list by any stretch, but he shares a couple things. He says, once, <coughs> excuse me again, once you were not a people, but now you are a people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. You are God's special possession. You are God's people. God has gifted us with faith and forgiveness and peace and salvation and status as His special people, His special possession. All those gifts belong to us now because of God's generosity and those people who came after. And so it is that that Peter says, now, let's think about how we can pay that forward. There's a lot of different ways, but so he just offers us a couple of ideas. He says, number one, how about we declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light? And number two, how about live such good lives among the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God. Let's talk about number one first. Declare the praises of him who called you out of the darkness of sin into his wonderful light. Declare God's praises. Off the top of your head, what's the first thing that comes to mind when you think about how might I declare God's praises? My guess is, if not the first, one of the first things that comes to mind is what we're doing right here, right? You come to church. That's been the, the essence of what worship is right from the very beginning. We hear what God has done, we respond with a spoken word. We hear what God has done, we respond with sung response. We hear what God has done, we respond with hymns and songs of praise declaring His glories, right? So what we do on a Sunday morning, we declare God's praises. Perfect way to declare the praises of him who've called us out of darkness into his wonderful light. And that's great. But you know what? I'm going to suggest something. You know, I've been sitting in pews a lot longer than I've been standing in front of the pews. And, and if I'm being completely honest with you, I will say that on most Sundays... I'm more interested in what I get out of worship than what I give to God by, de by way of declaring his praises. I mean, I, I come because I, I want to be filled in some way, right? I, I want to be filled with, um, with understanding. Maybe something's going on. I, I want to, to try and get some understanding from God. I, I want to be filled with comfort from some hurt. I want to be filled with knowledge. I want to be filled with motivation, right? To, to go out and, you know, fight the good fight. I, I want to be filled with something probably even more than I want to declare God's praises. Again, if I'm being totally honest. And you know, that's not such a bad thing. I mean, worship means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. We're, we're here for a lot of different reasons. And so I say that not necessarily to, to, to shame or, or, or say that's not, that shouldn't be a part of our worship. We should all be about declaring God's praises. No, I say that because when you look at what Peter says about declaring God's praises, about paying forward what we've received, about recognizing the gifts that we've received as people of God... When you look at everything that Peter says, what I'm suggesting is that maybe we shouldn't narrow our focus just to say, well, if I come on Sunday morning and sing some songs, then I've really done everything that Peter is talking about. No. Peter is talking about a life that is filled with declaring God's praises. Peter is encouraging us to live lives, to, to pay it forward to God, to declare his praises with our entire lives. There are so many options, there are so many opportunities, there are so many ways that we can pay it forward that we really shouldn't limit our thinking just to what happens on a Sunday morning. I love what happens on Sunday morning. I highly encourage you to come to church. I highly encourage us to declare God's praises here. But let's just make this be one little part of how we pay forward what God has given to us. And so we can look at what Peter says and 
really focus in on that. Look at what he says. He says, Live such good lives among the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may glorify God. Now when Peter talks about living a good life, he's really not encouraging us, and no biblical writer would ever encourage us to use the example of the, the Pharisees, those religious leaders who were present at Jesus' time. You know, their whole thing was to keep the great unwashed masses at arm's length, right? They didn't want to hobnob with those sinners. And they kind of pretended to live these lives of moral superiority. You know, that's what they were all about. That's not what Peter's talking about when he says, live such good lives. He says, live such good lives among these folks that they may see your good deeds. He's really talking about, and the whole Bible really encourages us to do this, he's talking about interacting with the world. Not to keep ourselves separate from the world, but to interact with the world, to intermingle, to interact with, the, with those people who maybe don't know, or don't understand, or don't care, or maybe are vehemently and even violently opposed to Christianity and Christians and to everything the Bible tells us about who Jesus is and what it means to be a follower of Christ. Peter says, interact with those people in such a way that they may see your lives and be led to glorify God? Wow. That's putting an awful lot on our lives, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, when you think about it, what, what would that kind of a life look like that would lead people who don't know, don't understand, don't care, or even are opposed to the whole idea of Christians and Christianity. What would a life look like that might lead those people to glorify God? Hmm. Well, I might suggest we look at Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. Remember what Jesus did? There was one portion of his Sermon on the Mount. He, he kind of goes back and forth on this, but he says, you've heard it said, but let me tell you. He goes, this is what you learned growing up from your parents and from other people, but let me tell you a different way to look at life, a different way to interact with people. You've heard it said, love your neighbor, hate your enemy, right? Well, that makes sense. You know, people who are nice to you, you're nice to them. People who do things for you, you do things for them. You'd be a good neighbor, right? The enemies, the people who don't do nice things to you, the people who are mean, the people who are unpleasant, the people who are hard to get along with, those are your enemies. You can hate them. Yeah, and just whatever all comes along with hating them, that's fine. That's, he says, that's what you've heard. That's what the world thinks. He goes, but I tell you, love your enemy. And, and pastor says this, and I've always said this too. Love in the Bible is not a, just a feeling. It's a feeling that leads to an action. So he says, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. You know, turn the other cheek, all of that. That's how we pay it forward. Because isn't that what we've received from God? That unconditional one-way love? Not because we deserved it, not because we earned it, but because of who God is. God loves us because of who he is, not because of what we've done. And so Jesus says, you've heard it said, but I tell you, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. That's how we pay it forward. And in a day and age where crassness and incivility and foul language and poor behavior and self-interest trumps everything. How about in a day and age like that, we don't do those things? What if we live our lives and let the fruits of the Spirit be evident? Remember what those fruits of the Spirit are? I'll share them with you. The fruits of the Spirit in the lives of a Christian are love. And again, love that leads to actions, right? Love, joy, peace, forbearance. Ooh, there's a good one. You know, patience, forgiveness kind of stuff. Forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. All of these things are gifts of the Holy Spirit. They're things that God has given to us. These are gifts that we've received and God says now let's turn 180 degrees and spread that out into the world. 
there are so many options and so many ways that we can, first of all, recognize gifts that we've received, and then there are so many ways that we can pay that, those gifts forward. I was just talking to somebody last night. I heard a, he, he gave me a, I don't know if it was, he came up with it or if it was a quote, but he said, you know, whenever you put a drop of hope into a pool of despair, you never know where those ripples are going to go. Wow, that's good stuff. But that's what it is to pay things forward. There's so many ways, so many opportunities. And when we think about what Peter said, declare the praises of God, that also involves talking, doesn't it? You know, it's not just us going about our lives and doing our things and saying, okay, God, I'm paying this all forward by living my good life. No, it's also about talking, right? It's telling people, hey, I have peace in my life that God has given me. And I'd like you to know that peace. It's about telling people, you know, I have, I have joy because I know somebody loves me, even if I'm sometimes unlovable. Even if I don't feel loved by people around me, I know that there's a God who loves me and I can point to examples, very specific examples of his love. And we can tell people about the comfort in our lives that comes from knowing that we have a, a purpose here, that we are God's people and that we've been called out of darkness to declare God's praises. We have a purpose and we have a, a point that we're all heading towards, this promise of heaven. All of these things... Go back to the early Christians. Think again of that chain of paying it forward. Those early Christians who dug into their pockets and said, hey, I want to support this ministry. Those early Christians who went out to people who didn't necessarily like them, didn't care what they had to say, thought they were crazy, thought they were crackpots, and they just said, hey, I'm just going to tell you what I know. I'm going to tell you what I've received. I'm gonna share, I want to share with you these gifts that I've been given. Those are all things that we can do that we can do to pay it forward, to declare God's praises, to glorify God with our lives, with our words, with our actions. You know, it's interesting. Um, a couple days before I heard that, um, this American Life story, Sharon and I were driving back from Durango. And we were just having a conversation. We got six hours to drive, so we talk about all kinds of stuff. And we ended up talking about um, you know, Sharon works third shift at the hospital. She's there at night. People come, people go. You never know. She never knows the way she treats somebody, does something nice for somebody. You never know whether that made a difference, made their, their hospital stay, their sickness a little bit better, helped. You know, you just never know because they're, they're gone. And I shared with her, I said, you know, in 20 years of ministry, I, I couldn't really think of a particular instance where something that I said or something that I did made a difference in somebody's life. And that wasn't meant to be like an oh, poor me moment or anything like that. It was just a recognition of the fact that, number one, I tend to focus on you know, where I failed and the frustrations that I had. Um, but then people come and go, and you just never know. You, know. you throw something out there, you never know whether it's really made a difference in somebody's life. You never know whether it's had an impact or not. I kid you not, the next day, I got an email. Out of the blue, I got an email from somebody that I had counseled years ago. And I looked back on that and thought, because of the way the situation turned out, that that was another one of my failures, right? And I got this email from this person who said, I just wanted to let you know that during one of the darkest parts of my life, when I was suffering and really going through a difficult time, some of the things you said made a huge difference in my life. <sighs> wow. I had no idea. I had no idea that something that I had been given from God that I had tried to pass along to somebody had made a difference in somebody's life. It was really great to hear. And then the next day I hear about how Miss S had been so kind and compassionate to Olivia and how she was now paying it forward to somebody else. I'm like, okay, God, I'm getting the message, <laughs> right? Encouragement for all of us is that we've received these gifts from God. Peace, comfort, love, hope, purpose. We're God's special people. Let's pay it forward. 
We never know what a difference God can make in somebody's life if we share that. Wait, you know what? That's not right. You do know. You do know what a difference God can make in your life. Let's pay that forward. Amen.